What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week, Vincent Janito, Scoop, Jared Petty, Scoop. and Marty Sleva. Great. We've got a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about Mass Effect Andromeda. <gasps> oh, cool. We're going to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. <gasps> but first, is the PlayStation 4 Pro a PlayStation 4 problem? Oh, <laughs> God, words! Your work here is done. <laughs> Uh, Sony's uh, PlayStation meeting was yesterday. They did finally unveil the PlayStation 4 Neo, which is the PlayStation 4 Pro. Mm -hmm. I want to know, were you impressed by <laughs> what you saw? Did, did you come to this Very show? Idea. Did you come to this show thinking you were going to ask that question and some some human, I'm some carbon-based life form with a brain was going to say, what? Yes, <laughs> I was impressed by it. It was the most impressive thing I've wow. seen since the iPhone 7. Address your hate mail to Vin Cognito. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. The very idea that it might be impressive to somebody is laugh-inducing to... Vince. I didn't yeah, think it, it was that bad. Oh no, I'm not saying it was terrible. Was Impressive? Yeah. Impressive? <laughs> yeah, I think the main thing here is just I don't know who this conference was for. Uh, it didn't seem like it was for any of us in the room, and it seems like if someone is super interested in that leap to faux 4K and, and HDR, that they're probably already a PC gamer, probably mm -hmm. already a hardcore PC gamer, they probably already have that in their lives. Um, and so, especially. Sony coming off like such a strong press conference at E3, such an yeah. incredible yeah. press conference at E3, this just felt sort of lifeless. Yeah, this was this was not something that interested me. I, and it had, the idea hasn't from the beginning. I, I, you want to excite me about a, a console? Tell me about better games at a lower price point. Uh, instead, I got a bunch of features that I don't really want that I can pay a little bit more for, and I don't see yeah. any particularly compelling reason to do that. Yeah, I mean, well, I was just going to say, even features aside, the whole meeting just sort of had more like a somber tone that wasn't yeah, really what we're used yes. to from Sony. Yeah. It's, you had it's Mark Cerny and, and Andrew House, who are both you know, incredibly smart. Uh, yeah, creators, yeah, and great was, speakers they've shown yeah, again and again. Yeah, but just also like <clears throat> wasn't really sexy. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Really, well, it, didn't get anyone jazzed up. Yeah, for, uh, it yeah. didn't have verb. It didn't. Uh, this is gonna sound corny, but it didn't seem like it came from the heart. I, I get mm -hmm. the feeling almost that this is a move that they feel that they kind of have to make, mm -hmm. uh, either because of market pressures within the video game industry or maybe like without. I mean. Like I know that technically Sony has spun off its you know its electronics division and stuff. It's not really necessarily part of the same company anymore exactly. But I still have trouble imagining that, uh, a world in which there's no pressure from from the PlayStation division to generate some kind of interest in in Sony's 4K. Yeah, it, it felt like it felt like a Nintendo Direct without the charming goofiness. Like <laughs> I, I, I I was like sometimes Nintendo Direct, some sitting there going huh, and now I was like oh no, those are okay, never mind. Yeah, like, this this is this is how bad it gets. It, it was not. I don't know. It just it just kind of felt half baked. Yeah. yeah, but in terms of like the features and the power of the system itself, like you were saying, you know, more power doesn't necessarily even interest you. I mean, like more power interests me a great deal, mm -hmm. and I still didn't feel like it was it was for me because mm. the main reason for that is because you know, if I if I look at like, okay, so here's all this power, and then what do they lead off with as the main benefit of that power? 4K or 4K, as we're as we're as we're gonna start calling it, yeah. right? I mean, I don't know. It's just like, so even if it was true 4K, I sincerely believe, and this is like as someone who's played games in 4K, like um, as most of us have at this point, in, in at one point or another, it's like resolution is a is an area of diminishing returns. Like there are lots of different ways. Like when we were playing in like 480p, you know, yes, the jump to 720 and 1080p was a dramatic, mm -hmm. like game-changing difference, both in the way <clears throat> games looked, how immersive they were, and also in how they were developed. Yeah. Um, but bumping up the resolution again is not what's making the big difference these days. What makes a, a, a night and day difference is lighting models. Mm -hmm. What makes a night and day difference is post-processing, mm -hmm. um, and all kinds of other you know, special effects. Obviously, texture detail always makes a difference. Mm -hmm. These are the, but especially lighting, especially lighting and post-processing, those without, you know, maybe people don't realize it, those are the things that take a scene from looking drab and standard and average to completely absorbing and the almost photorealistic in some cases. Help pull um, you out of the uncanny valley. Yeah, exactly. And and the the idea of that not being where they want it, like, they, they got to it. They got to it. Eventually they were like, well, if you don't have a 4K TV, and if your TV doesn't support HDR, yeah, you know, this you know this version of, uh, what was it, uh, Shadows of Mordor will support super sampling and a couple of other features that aren't really that great or new. Um, but I don't know, what I want to hear is all that power is going to go into Areas that actually make a, a sizable difference, not an incremental one. To me, that's what it, 
That's what 4K is. I like, mean, it's incremental. The thing that you're mentioning all this, my favorite games this year are uh, Oxenfree and The Witness and uh, <laughs> sure. Inside mm -hmm. and Pokemon Go. And I don't need 4K for any of those. Okay. I don't need HDR for any of those. And so, I mean, I'm more interested in just smart, creative, fun games than, man, that black is real black and that white <laughs> is real white. Like, I don't, I, 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 it's not for me. Well, I sure. mean, if you go back in time to Sony's amazing, you know, PS4 press conference, not just the one that we had this year that was all games, mm -hmm. but when they were really, you know, when it was new Xbox One versus new PS4, we're showing it off. The PS4 conference was all about the games even then. Mm -hmm. Even when they were debuting the hardware, it yeah. was about the yeah. games. And that didn't come across. The moments where they had me yesterday were the moments where they're talking about games, but it wasn't yeah. the thrust of the discussion. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think, I think uh, it probably speaks volumes that uh, one of the reasons that their presentation fell flat is because the majority of people at home didn't have TVs capable of displaying, oh, sure. <laughs> of displaying the details they That's were trying to show yeah, everybody. If you're looking on your laptop monitor, like <laughs> right. you're not getting the difference between. Yeah. Or if you're looking yeah. at, if you're watching it on your TV through some kind of a streaming app or whatever, yeah. like you're not. You, literally, the the overwhelming majority of people at home did not have the hardware required to understand, even understand their sales pitch. They may as well have been on stage describing what VR is like mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how much the value was not coming. We they didn't mention it all. I thought right. maybe they'd be talking they, about they it. They mentioned it for very briefly. For yeah. 10 seconds, okay. which, which, I mean, it was 10 seconds longer than they mentioned the Vita. But. Sure. <laughs> and, but you want to know, in those 10 seconds, they said the words that I wanted to hear in the rest of the presentation. They said, yes. In, if, if people choose to use the, the if developers want to use the power, leverage the power of the PlayStation 4 Pro for, for, for PSVR games, they can run them at higher frame rates. And that is exactly what I wanted to hear. Because yeah. like you can say what you want about visual fidelity, and maybe it's not your thing, maybe you don't care. But I think I feel like almost everyone, even if they can't see the difference, they can feel the difference when they're playing something in 30 versus 60. Mm -hmm. And it's like the fact, that one of the big kind of letdowns of this generation, and this is not solely on Sony, this is on Microsoft as well with the Xbox One. One of the big disappointments is that we, we thought with, when we heard the specs of the PS4 and the Xbox One, we thought, this is it, this is when 60 frames becomes the standard. Like no more, no more shooting feeling like it's like on, you're moving a cursor underwater. It's gonna feel fluid and fast uh, the way you want it to, right? And then it's like there were a couple of games that kind of realized that problem, and then the overwhelming majority of them didn't. So that was one of the big disappointments. So when I heard they were going to do a kind of a mid-cycle refresh, I'm like, priority number one is making 60 FPS almost a guaranteed uh, well, factor, I mean, and they barely even mentioned the possibility that, that current games, or even new PS4 Pro versions of games, could perform better. They just talked about upping the resolution. I mean, especially, that's especially important in VR, because it's not yeah. just a 30 yeah. to 60 yeah. difference yeah. in gameplay. It is, I am nauseous or I am not Exactly, nauseous. right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. Big, yeah. Big, which is a big element of selling that platform yeah, ultimately totally. to people, right? right? Fra frame count carries the illusion mm -hmm. in VR. Yeah. If you haven't experienced Absolutely. virtual reality yet, mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to overstate how important uh, the smoothness of the frame rate is mm -hmm. to yep. what you're doing in those lenses and whether or not your mind chooses to believe what's happening around you. It's strange. My, my brain can, can readily accept that my world is made up of geometric abstractions, right. but if it's chugging, <laughs> then the illusion's broken. Sure. I wonder how Sony's feeling today, because the reaction to their meetings is almost universally negative uh, yeah. from everywhere I've seen. And uh, I think Sony is used to a lot, of, much warmer response. Like, Certainly in this generation, ever since used to the that. reveal of the PlayStation 4, mm -hmm. all of their meetings and conferences have been really, really enjoyable, really yeah. exciting. And this is the first time everyone was like, that's it? Well, and also like the way Microsoft fired back, like on not only on Twitter by showing, yeah. hey, the Xbox One S is out right now, and it has all of these features yeah. that you can do, and some of them that the the PS4 Pro can't. And then uh, Andrew Goldfarber had a news interviewed mm -hmm. uh, Albert Pinello over at Microsoft, and he pretty much flat out stated that uh, the Scorpio is going to be more powerful in yeah. every way imaginable. Yeah, and that's not um, PR speak. Yeah. Like if, if you go, there's a very specific. I mean, generally speaking, Sony doesn't like to share lots of specs mm -hmm. at these things because they just kind of want to keep it like kind of broad, high level, sure. like good for people who aren't necessarily technophiles, and I'm certainly no technophile by any mm -hmm. uh, stretch of the imagination, but you know, when we, just by hearing the words they used, they said, yes, the new GPU in the, in the PS4 Pro is roughly twice as powerful as, the, uh, as that in the PS4. Right there, the PS4's GPU puts out like 1.85 teraflops. Um, like, it, you double that, you've got less than four. The Scorpio is six. 
there you go. Like it's right there yeah. on paper. So that's not Microsoft just making things up. Mm -hmm. If Sony's being honest, if both companies are being honest about over the power of their systems, uh, the Scorpio is significantly more powerful than the PS4 Pro. Yeah, one of the most common questions I saw people asking yesterday was, wait, is the PS4 Pro the PS Neo? And it's I, it's easy to like people well, say like well of course it is this is what they were going to announce but I think first of all people thought it was going to be called the Neo yeah mm -hmm. and I think they're also just expecting something bigger like this is going to be like the basically your new console it's going to mm -hmm. be super powerful yeah. and well, it's and just kind of like not quite there expecting uh, like the PS4 and the Xbox One how they launched against each other within just a matter of weeks yeah. maybe people expecting this is going to come out fall 2017 which exactly. is when we yeah. assume that the Scorpio yeah. is going to come out as opposed to oh this is out in 60 days yeah yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's out November 10th for 400 bucks. Yeah. yeah, and it seems like it's uh, going to be considerably less powerful than the Scorpio. Yeah, when yeah. It finally and arrives. the other and the other thing that I find confounding about it, not to not to harp, um, you know, is so one of the things that I think Microsoft did a really good job with with the 360 was they said, okay, if you make a game on our platform, it is 720p or it is 1080i. Mm -hmm. There is no 540. There is no old. No, you make a game on our platform, it is HD resolution. Yes, it can scale down to non-HD resolutions, fine. But if you put a game on our platform, this is what it has to be. And I'm sure for developers, that was very, very difficult. But as a consumer, it made me go, well, it is time for me to buy an HD TV. And the reason yeah. is not because I'm forced to, it's because I know for a fact that if I drop money on this HD TV, that every single game for this new console is going to make me proud of that television. Also, right? yeah. I cannot read the text in Dead Rise. <laughs> <laughs> There was that yeah. problem too. But now with the but now with the PS4 Pro, um, it's a more developer-friendly move to not mandate mm -hmm. that every game has to run in 4K or some variant uh, in the 4K range, yeah. which is actually pretty wide when you look at it. Um, but they, so great, that's good for developers that they don't mandate that. But then on the flip side, where does that leave consumers? Like. Mm -hmm. Like I don't really care about 4K, but if I know that every single game is going to support 4K going forward in some way, I'm like, all right, I'll bite. Like especially as like someone who works in this industry, like I kind of do have to experience this the best way that I possibly can. But like I don't want to go buy a 4K TV yeah, and then yeah. find out that only like 10 out of the you know 300 games that come out this year are going to support it. Are going to yeah. support it? That's a waste of my money. Yeah, now, be, oh, that's ahead. okay. I, so what if this thing does turn out to be iterative? We talked a lot about iterative hardware cycles. Mm -hmm. You know, this one comes out this year. We get our phones in a one-year cycle. What if there's a PlayStation Pro X in November of next year? Um, I mean, do, can something like that happen? It, but, I mean, it, can they really afford uh, the hardware costs? I don't know. Of iterating every single I mean, year? I don't know. I, I feel like it would be less the Pro X and more of like what we saw with the other hardware that was revealed with the new PS4, which is smaller, mm -hmm. and it's just like, oh no, this isn't the PS4 Slim, this is just what the standard PS4 is going forward. Mm -hmm. So I could see maybe in a year or two years, we get a new Pro mm -hmm. that is just like, this is slightly more powerful than the old Pro, but it's just replacing the old Pro. Okay. It's not It's not another skew, it is just the new norm. That's what I'm wondering about, is how often these, these iterative cycles are gonna take place. I mean, Microsoft's flat come out and said, yeah, we're looking at an iterative. Yeah. Model. Yeah. yeah, PC model, but what's what's the window? How does that work? I think it all comes down to to the development process and, and what the gains are for, for the end user. Like One of the things that's very confusing to me right now about the PS4 Pro is that it's unclear to me if, so for instance, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Yeah. Loved the heck out of that game, mm -hmm. reviewed it. Um, on PC, on a decent PC, running at like the highest specs at 60 frames per second, that game is Stunning! It, yeah. is a, it is a stunner. Okay, on on console, still a very good looking game, uh, but it you know it 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 keeps thirty or maybe just under. It stutters a little bit here and there, a little yeah. disappointing. What would have sold me is if I know that even if I don't have a 4K television, the that the PS4 Pro can go. Okay, we're not rendering in 4K, so let's take this power and now. The game can run. The can run at 60. Mm -hmm. Or now uh, we've already seen a little bit of the idea of turning graphical features on and off on console games to get you more performance. There's a few games that have already done a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get too in the weeds with that because then that, the line between PC and console really start to blur. But what I want to see is that on a non 4K TV, 
I can say, forget 4K, give me a better frame rate, and like what would have sold me is Deus Ex Mankind Divided running on a PS4 Pro at ultra settings, mm -hmm. running at 60, and yeah. I would have said, here is my money, yeah. mm -hmm. end of story. Yeah. And so if, that, that, that's, the, yeah. that's kind of the, the question, is do these games, will these games scale as the system becomes more powerful? Uh, if all that happens, yes, automatically, then they can, uh, they can iterate their hardware <laughs> as much as they want, yeah. because like I'll always have the version that I like, and if someone else happens to come in later in the game and buy a new one, then maybe theirs will run 10% you know, better or whatever. Like As long as I'm always gonna see a benefit every time I upgrade, I'll keep upgrading because that's just my mindset as like a, a person who plays PC games also. But if it's not gonna benefit me that way, then I don't really care. But that's the thing is that all these things are totally unclear. We don't know if that's the way the Pro is actually gonna work. If the yeah. Pro would fix the lip syncing in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, <laughs> That is, it's worth that would be yeah that'd be meaningful to me. That game is like everyone's yeah. just like like it's like 2002 in that game. Like, yeah. uh, what do you think about this quote from Mark Cerny? He says PS4 Pro is not the start of a new console generation, nor is it a console that's going to blur the lines between generations. We kind of thought that's what we were sort of moving towards. Yeah, uh, the end of console generations yeah. and going iterative, but now. It sounds like this is just a, an upgraded PS4. Yeah. Stay tuned for the PlayStation 5. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is I don't think we're any anywhere close to the end of console generations. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would be shocked if three years from now we're not talking about the PS5. Well, there is enormous marketing power behind a console generation. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's not an easy mm -hmm. thing to lay aside. Yes, there's yeah, potentially new great yeah. art marketing right. power. You know, you look at the, the cult of, the, the kind of cult of of Apple presentations you get once or twice a year where sure. you go in and it is, it is you know, an event when some new hardware is, is, is presented. But in the console space, those generations are a tremendous tool for, yeah. for building sales, building hype, building messaging. It would be hard to lay that aside. Um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm fine with that. I'd, I'd gladly stick with the generations because I'm an old man and I like old man things. I don't know. Like I I love I love I have a tremendous amount of respect for Mark Cerny. I think he's a brilliant brilliant mm -hmm. uh, man and he's done a great job with the PlayStation 4 platform uh, as a whole. But to me, that is that is Mar like really Marble Madness. What's up? Marble Madness. Yes. Marble Madness. Yeah, that, 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 I was gonna say that you said it's uh, true. You it's said the PlayStation platform as a whole, but he is responsible for NAC. Yeah. We, <laughs> well, yeah. But everything but NAC. <laughs> everything uh, aside from NAC. Aside from NAC. Yeah. Fun Didn't fact. Get NAC too. We'll put a knack strix on it. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> Who's Max going to do the guide for knack? Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> right, fair I, enough. <laughs> I mean, I love Cerny, um, knack aside, but. You know, that said, like I, I do feel like it's kind of marketing speak at that point. Like They're kind of trying to have their cake and eat it too. Here's this dramatic step forward and it's gonna change the way you play games, but it's not a new generation. You know, like, you can't have both. You yeah. know, you, the, that's like, you're you're trying to sell the snake and the oil at that point, you know. Yeah. Did, you guys, just, did you guys happen to check out the uh, Asian presentation late last night? It's like, it was like a lot cooler, right? It was a lot cooler. There was like <laughs> glitter, <Yeah. laughs> like, cool lights. There was glitter. Yeah, consoles there was rose up. Consoles oh, rise. Oh. I couldn't understand any of it, but it was awesome to look at. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> I missed yeah. this completely. But then it was yeah. weird. They like they brought out these like booth babes that sort of just stood there for like two minute long photo ops. And I'm like, all right, well, this is getting that's weird now. <laughs> and suddenly you know, it's 19 yeah. again. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the course. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to think that's about the, the Marble Madness piano music now. It's like, that. <laughs> so I feel great. like that's always playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If if uh, if a HD remake or like Marble Madness yeah. two is like the. Is, is a launch PS4 Pro launch? That, 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 that's that's what we call a game changer. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's go back that's to the Game Boy. It. That's not that's ninety bucks and it comes with Tetris. I'm in. That's what, old, uh, that's what those old men used to call a killer app. <laughs> you remember how hard that was to control on the NES? Oh, oh I love oh, Marble like, Madness. I yeah, no, nah, you gotta have track bottle. Like, yeah. Arcade or, or, or get out. Arcade or, <laughs> or, or get out. That's motto. Just yeah. like, Arcade or get out. Uh, so, well, with Marvel Madness or Crystal Castles, you gotta have the track. Oh yeah, Crystal Castles especially. Yeah. yeah. I do have to say, I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, using the pro surname with any sort of like video game accessor accessory. Like the what was the Wii, Wii controller pro? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. like it's like this is not the controller the pros use. Yeah. Like, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Professional. Yeah, especially yeah. now it's that's an entertainment means. device. Yeah. Like, especially now that's like a more loaded term than ever, right? Because then because like back when there weren't people professionally playing games. Yeah, there are for pro pro living. Yeah. Like it, it, like it still would seem a little bit silly. Yeah. But now it's like, no, you're definitely not a pro. There's a yeah. really angry Smash Brothers champion out there or something. Right. Like pounding on his bars, like I'm a pro and I used it. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I know, I'm. I realize there are professional video game players, so I don't think the P PlayStation 4 Pro needs. That also, I don't right. think there is any pro or profession in the world where the barrier to entry is just $400. Yeah, buy and then it, you're a pro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but NBA 
pro because that's just three dollars four hundred dollars. One of our listeners, Brian Icorn, emailed us at the address gamescoop at ign.com, just like you can. And he says, "Bear with us here. This is a little bit of a longer." Mail. He says, with the announcement of the PS4 Pro seemingly going against everything we had expected the Neo to be, i.e. a next generation upgrade launching next holiday, and appearing more as a soft upgrade to the current PS4, is there a risk of Sony running into complacency over having a larger install base than their competition? It's a smart move on paper. You've sold 40 million plus units worldwide. Don't want to alienate those who've embraced your product. But with Nintendo sitting on the edge of releasing another innovative system that already has positive third-party support, and Microsoft dead set on pushing the boundaries of their platform to another generation, will it become a risk when the unreasonable supporters, or fanboys, begin questioning when their best system ever is only best in numbers sold and not overall productivity. Okay, so complacency, I think it's way too early to start worrying about that mm-hmm. yet. What we saw yesterday was a misstep. I don't think it's necessarily reflective of any kind of, of spiral and hubris. But yeah. history does teach that Generally speaking, if you get ahead in the console space for too long, you start making arrogant mistakes. Yes, uh, that literally always happens. Over yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and over and over again. Sony did it after the PlayStation 2 and then moved My- into the PlayStation 3. Microsoft, Microsoft did, it, did it between 360 and Xbox yeah. One. Nintendo yeah. did it after the Wii. And Nintendo yeah. did it after the Wii. Yeah, it, and it, it really goes back even farther than that. Yeah. I mean, it goes way back. Yeah. Uh, you can look at almost you can every... Sega with Saturn. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Sega with, Sega Saturn. with the Saturn. Exactly. Yeah. And on and on. And Nintendo with the Super Nintendo into the, into the Gem 1064. Mm-hmm. All of these, yeah. So, yes, if there's anything to history, uh, the danger is already there. Uh, But I don't think yesterday is indicative of that. I think yesterday was a presentation that didn't go the way they'd like it to. Uh, Six months from now, if we're still having this problem, yeah, more. Also, I wouldn't use associate the word complacency with Sony because they are the only first party to be going all in on VR, which that's not a complacent move. That's a... That's, you know, that's taking a huge risk. Sure. Um, but yeah, that being said, I, I between the the, the pro uh, sort of just underwhelming most people and the the fact that VR isn't a sure thing, like this could be a, a, a sh- shift in the tides for Microsoft. But just as you say, VR was a big risk. Yeah. If that turns out to not be a huge success, yes. and the pro's not a huge success, yeah, yeah then. Sony can be and then if uh, six months from now the Scorpio event is like, holy crap, look how good this looks. Yeah. And then, yeah. On the other hand, Microsoft does not have cave ladies fighting robot dinosaurs. That is mm, very true. Is that fact. And yeah. that counts for a lot. That was, yeah. that was the best thing yesterday. Uh, well, we could, we could go ahead and uh, talk about that. Oh, now. we, don't yeah. we about did get to see a new little, uh, new little demo yeah. of Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I wanted to get to hear what you guys thought. Uh, I think that game continues to look very, very pretty, very mm-hmm. cool. Sure. But I didn't really see anything new that was like, I'm even more excited for yeah. this now. It's just like, yep, still excited for that game. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we were very negative on the conference in the first half of the show. Uh, that being said, the games they showed, like, I walked away from the, the media briefing or whatever the hell, the meeting, uh, and I was like, well, I'm excited for Spider-Man, I'm excited for Horizon, I'm excited for Days Gone, I'm yeah. excited for Call of Duty, and so that was cool. And yeah, the one thing about Horizon is everything has looked a bit samey, mm-hmm. which yeah. I hope that's not the case. Like, samey... As in, I want to play this, yeah. but I'm just worried that like after two hours, am I going to have seen everything Horizon? You, is you say samey. I say a continual barrage of robot dinosaurs and cave That's ladies. all you want. <laughs> and really, I mean, that's just more of what I want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes sometimes the same is good. It's like when you're eating lasagna and you look over in the tray and there's more lasagna, and you're like. That lasagna is not going to be any less good than the lasagna I just ate. Come to me, eat more lasagna. I like to think that as, as Jared Petty falls asleep at night, it's the images of cave ladies fighting dinobots, and the hey, Marble Madness music is playing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a nice lasagna heating in the corner. <laughs> that's not all that far from the truth. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, that's actually that's actually pretty close. Mm-hmm. The thing with Horizon is that um, at this point, I think they know how how much of a darling the game is. They know that critics are excited to, to get their hands on it. They know that the general populace just, you know, they're just, they're, their eyes cross in excitement every time they, they see more footage of it because it's just so gorgeous, right, and evocative. But I almost feel like that was their stopgap. We're like, well, yeah, if all else fails, if they're not impressed and happy by the end of our presentation, we'll just show new new Horizon yeah. footage. And like, you know, <laughs> she'll, 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 climb, she'll up. climb a robo giraffe <laughs> right. and then hack yeah. it right. 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 and everyone's exactly. like, all right. And all of your dreams will have come true and you won't care anymore. But like, you wanna know what's funny about that is that like, in theory, 
the, even though I, I, every time I see Horizon, I'm like, yes, I want it. Watching that particular demo, I was kind of like, if this was supposed to prove to me that I need the PS4 Pro, yeah, it yeah. didn't do that, because I'm here to tell you the game looked gorgeous before, and like, again, the fact that 90% of people are at home watching that hori new Horizon footage on the same TV they watched their, you know, the E3 presentation on. Yeah. So like, if there's something dramatically better about it, we didn't, you know, most people didn't see it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm still excited for Horizon, obviously, but uh, did it function for me as a, did it make me go, oh, crap, I need the PS4 Pro now? Yeah. Nope, didn't yeah, do that for sure. me. Mm -hmm. Now, what about Mass Effect Andromeda? We mm. actually got our first gameplay yeah. demo of that, yesterday, uh -huh. I think. Yeah. And uh, I'm a little confused about this game, because I'm, I'm a big Mass Effect fan, I'm excited for the new game, and they've been, it's been announced for so long without them really unveiling what it is, mm -hmm. and to, for that to be the first gameplay demo, I was like, it was like, like it was expecting yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, it was yeah. like they it was like they expected that we already knew what the game was, how mm -hmm. it played, who yeah. was who the characters were. Like it was it was like coming in like halfway through a, a movie that had already started, and except the like I don't know the the narrator expects you to kind of just know what's happening already. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it wasn't just was like. It was good looking, but it was a weird area to demo. It was kind of dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we weren't really doing a lot. You're there's just platforming. Looking, yeah, there's platforming. You were looking at like these weird ferns, like which I think that game's gonna be total. That game's weak. I, mean, I, I think so. I think we're totally fine with that. Uh, I thought the news that came out afterwards, in an interview afterwards, they just casually mentioned that the uh, the, the you're not really choosing a gender in the game. You're choosing between a brother and a sister. Mm. And that the other one exists in the story. Mm -hmm. So if you play as a girl, her brother exists in the story. If right. you play as the guy, her, his sister exists in the story, which I think is cool. I think yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. I think, a, a, especially in sort of a grand space adventure, a brother sister dynamic has always worked in the best. Yeah. Star Wars. I'm, I'm referring. Did you talk about Star Wars? I'm referring to Star Wars. <laughs> not Ice Pirates. Not Ice Pirates. Dark Star. We don't talk about the Ice Pirates. No, not Doc, no. Dark Star. We don't talk about Dark Stars. No. Okay. I don't think were there siblings in Ice Pirates. I don't think so. I don't <laughs> I think there so. siblings in Ice. There were space herpes. There were space herpes in Ice Pirates. Shout yeah. out to space herpes. Watch, watch Ice Pirates, kids. Ice Pirates is real good. Real. Fun. <laughs> That's. Yeah, uh, yeah. Real let me clarify that. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not <laughs> real no, good. No, no, it's not. Let me roll this one. It's good the way Kroll. It's good the way Kroll's good. Yeah, it's oh, a movie of a, of a different time. A movie that would not be made and released in theaters today. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, in other uh, new game announcements this week, what about Super Mario Run? Yeah, what about that? What about that? That was a surprise. Yeah, that, in, a day, in a day full of conferences, that was probably the biggest surprise. Yeah? yeah. Just like, For sure? sure. Yeah, that was, there was a, it, it, just like, well, Miyamoto's in San Francisco. That's interesting. You know, he's just, there he is up there on the stage, and here is the, the long-dreamed-of, Nintendo, not endless runner, but automatic runner uh, mm -hmm. that people yeah. have talked about. This is a game that I've heard people describe, you know, out, pulling it out of their pocket as an example of what Nintendo should be doing in the mobile space. They throw it out there, and I don't know. I, I, I'm happy that it's fixed price. I'm thrilled by that. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's yeah. the, not the, not the best that. piece of news that I mean, came out of I'm that. thrilled yeah. by that. And it's, it's an weird it. that we have to like talk about video games that way. Yeah. Like it's, you never, yeah. NES games weren't released at a fixed price. They're <laughs> yeah. just released. They, like. yeah. I, I, I often feel like there's this conference coming someday that, that Nintendo's gonna sit down and say, we're gonna keep doing what we do, which is making the best games in the world. And you know, I, they're and, just and all going to be free is, to play. Uh, no, no, but they're but they're <laughs> but they're going to be across many platforms. You know, I I don't know. I still like Nintendo's hardware identity quite a bit. I think it's important mm -hmm. to them. Um, I am not crazy about the way Apple markets games to us and makes them available. I I, I think there's some problems there. Mm -hmm. But this explain, is a game. Explain. Discoverability. Oh um, yeah. Uh, well, Nintendo won't have that problem, right? Yeah. I mean, you can almost guarantee that every single Nintendo game is going to go is going to be immediately, you know, it, it, it would be mandated. I mean, I don't think Nintendo yeah. would let their games go to that platform if they didn't already suss that. I don't. I don't think so right? either. So yeah, I I have very mixed feelings about this. It's probably going to be a fun, readily accessible, reasonably priced, quality game. So I shouldn't be upset about that. But there's this tiny little part of me that just kind of went. Uh, even though it's a very good thing for that company and probably a very good thing for yeah. us. And uh, I think it, it, the control scheme is the smartest way to put Mario on a phone. Um, it's pretty much just taken from the Ubisoft's Rayman games, which is great because those are super fun. Awesome Rayman games. Jungle Run and Fiesta yeah. Run are both you know, incredibly fun ways to play the, uh, a platformer on your phone. It's sort of taking that idea of they'll handle the, the right word movement and then you handle the jumping and sort of the, the floaty physics. Uh, I'm totally cool with it. I'm not a big fan of the new Super Mario art style, just as a whole. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm kind of with you there. I yeah. wish 
maybe a Mario Maker style, you could switch between. That would be awesome. Styles. Yeah, I would definitely be down for that. If but they wanted to monetize that, I'd actually be okay with that, right? If like, that was you the want me like, to pay like five bucks for a Super Mario Bros. Three skin, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I could. Oh man, yeah. As long, as, many ideas. as long as it's not feature oriented, that's I, I want yeah. to avoid that. I, I don't want my Nintendo games. You know, when I lived in Japan, video games and and casino games have a relationship there that they don't really have as much here. Although that's changed in the mobile space. I don't want to see. These turn in turn into casino games that happen to be sold to me by by beloved characters, the way a lot of other franchises by other NES era companies are. You know, uh, uh, Nintendo hasn't quite fallen into like, that yet. Like Metal uh, Gear Pachinko. Yeah, that okay. kind of thing, that kind of situation. I don't want to see. I mean, that but happen. this game isn't um, a casino game. No, it's not. That's what I mean. I'm seeing this happen. This made me feel very happy. Okay. I've seen that happen with other properties, and it makes yeah. me sad. I was also very interested that they talked about. They very carefully used the word first. Uh, mm -hmm. Referring to yeah. uh, referring to its appearance on iOS, yeah, um, so meaning that we may see this in Android and we, or NX. Yeah, we I got, put that in bold in our little document. Yeah, when, yeah. I, when I was we writing got, it out. Uh, clarification. We spoke to Miyamoto yesterday, yeah. and it's coming uh, in 2017 to Android. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Which of um, course but, makes a lot of sense. But also, you mentioned the NX thing. Like that's also one of the things I thought about. Is like. Am I gonna be able to play this on whatever the hell the NX is? Mm -hmm. Like, is this a thing? If I buy, is the NX gonna pair with my Apple account? And that Nintendo branded things I buy through the App Store, like Fire Emblem and Animal Crossing, I'm gonna be able to play on whatever the hell the NX is. I mean, that sounds fun, but probably not. Yeah. <laughs> I think they also know. It's I think nice they, to want things. I think Nintendo also doesn't want to like kind of muddy the waters on their own on their on their native platforms, mm -hmm. right? Like if they're gonna release a new, a uh, big new 2D or 3D Mario platformer right on the NX. Then, like, why would they also want like an endless runnery yeah. like, to, to the console market that's been playing Mario games yeah. all their life? Like, like, sure, if if all I have to play a game on is my cell phone, I'm sure that Super Mario Run will be will, will be just fine. But if I have the choice of playing Super Mario Run on my on on my cell phone here, or play I don't know like whatever the new big 2D yeah. Super Mario Brothers game is on my NX. Mm -hmm. Like well, obviously, like which yeah. one, which one would I rather kind of mess with? Sure. And, and and I guess more from like a money standpoint and from a business standpoint, do I even want my console and like do I want my NX audience even having the opportunity to spend potentially half as much to get another 2D platformer sure. when I really want them to spend full yeah. price for the for yeah. the big tri you know triple A I mean, new this, one that this I'm could out. be almost the smartest advertisement for what the next quote unquote real Mario game is because mm -hmm. in the same way we saw uh, Pokemon 3DS game sales skyrocket uh, after Pokemon Go came out, yeah. mm -hmm. and which I imagine is going to go all the way into this fall with the Pokemon games. Uh, if in December, whenever this game comes out, yeah, I think December, people are playing this and then all of a sudden in March there's a brand new traditional, you know, full $60 Mario game, mm -hmm. maybe that millions and millions of people are going to download this game on their phone, if a fraction of them are like, well, I want to check out this new one, then, then it's that's great good for them. Form too. Yeah. No, this is a, it's a very smart move. It's a smart, easy brand I, play. I, it's the And honestly, in a lot of ways, as much as it's like shocking in a way, if you grew up with Mario and grew up with Nintendo, to see their properties appear on uh, on other major platforms like uh, like this, it might be a little bit strange. But like at the end of the day, like. When you think about it from like from a ones and you know like a dollars and cents standpoint, yeah. it could not be a more predictable yep. move. Like I think, especially since Apple and Nintendo are both companies who have grown their you know the gaming sector through you know mostly fueled by the race to the bottom and the push for you know accessibility and and cheap easy gaming that anyone can get into you know for better or for worse. I'm not super pleased with that being the way we grow, but um, you know, both both companies have embraced that fully, so I feel like it was only a matter of time until the two of them teamed up. Yeah, you, you asked me at the beginning, Damon, about my uh, iOS. Discoverability wasn't the only problem. The other problem I have with that ecosystem and that ties into this is uh, that what you said, race to the bottom. It has made games worth less. Mm -hmm. um, it has pushed the price uh, of games down. It has changed the way development cycles work. It's changed the way venture capital money is distributed in the video game industry in ways that I believe generally hurt the quality of games rather than help them. Also, sometimes work to exploit uh, frankly, to exploit addictive personalities in some mm -hmm. pretty nasty ways. Mm -hmm. But it, it's made it harder to make high quality games sometimes. Yeah, Nintendo's gonna does. make high quality games, but Nintendo has always been a very careful steward of their properties. And I'm glad they're showing restraint, not just flooding a whole line of mm -hmm. these out at once. Mario has been protected, his image has been protected by Nintendo in ways that other video and game characters, and I'm gonna, just to pull somebody out here, like say maybe Sonic, haven't necessarily. Mm -hmm. They haven't been as well stewarded and as well protected. The software that Mario's in is generally speaking uh, going to be high quality and carefully regulated. Mm -hmm. I want to see that continue, and 
Hopefully it will. I do worry that the fact that making games for mobile, when you already have Nintendo's big presence and cheap development costs and a huge market, there's going to be a temptation to saturate, say, the way that uh, uh, Square Enix saturated the mobile mm -hmm. and even DS market mm -hmm. to a point that a lot of the properties lost value eventually. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Nintendo would do that, but it makes me feel a little... And that's where the that's where the little asterisks of excitement yeah, comes the in. The, like, the concern know. comes uh, in. It's an yeah. asterisk. <laughs> ah, that asterisk again. <laughs> oh, no. I, I think Nintendo is, is kind of protecting themselves a little bit from that, <clears throat> safeguarding themselves a little bit from the race to the bottom by establishing right now that like, yeah, Super Mario Run is going to cost yeah. a fixed amount of money. Because then that what that does for them is it protects them from something that could otherwise have really dogged them. What if the game was free to play with some microtransactions or some other kind of monetization? Then millions and millions, right, aside from us all wanting to hang ourselves if that happened, the, 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 the worst thing for Nintendo down the road is that then millions and millions and millions of people now become, yes, millions more people become interested in their franchises or become aware of their franchise. Not that I think there's too many people who don't know what Mario is, um, but at the cost of people setting the expectation that this is supposed to be free. Mm -hmm. Then, when you're, when the, when the, the Mario version of Pokemon Sun and Moon comes out a few months mm -hmm. later, that should have gotten a boost yeah. from it, doesn't get a boost because you've courted a bunch of customers that believe they shouldn't have to pay for their yep. games, mm -hmm. and now you're asking them to pay, you know, whatever, you know, an NX game ends up costing yep. or whatever. And, like, that's kind of the interesting thing that I think Pokemon Sun and Moon will run into is that, like, yes, it makes total sense that, that uh, a success, like, uh, on mobile, like Pokemon Go, would m translate into more people being interested in playing uh, a franchise that maybe they weren't super familiar with before and being more invested in it. But I can't wait to see how many people who are super into Pokemon Go balk when <laughs> they see the $35, $40 price tag. Exactly. exactly. Oh, and they're ask. protecting themselves from that yeah. with, with, with Super Mario Run. What do you predict Super Mario Run will cost? Five. Six ninety nine. dollars That low. Yeah. That low? I think $5 sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. I, you don't I, think they go like twenty dollars? I, I think fourteen ninety nine is what I is what I thought. Square Enix has a bunch of their premium, yeah. premium prices yeah. that high, yeah. right? I, yeah, I, I feel like that's that's been the that's become like the the what you can get away with for creating a premium product, mm. you know, uh, price point. Although a lot of people think that's <laughs> it's funny that we live in this world, but there's a lot of people who think that's highway robbery for a video game. You know, no, like, I, I think I think that's that fifteen is much closer to what the game should cost. My suspicion yeah. is Nintendo's going to figure on scale. Yeah, that four ninety nine is going to make yeah. more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I guess. I guess 10, I my my mentality too is from a from like a market perspective, giving people a double digit number primes them for a double digit That's number. That's a good point. Like down the road, that's also a very good like, like if they're used to seeing like a, if if they're used to to a game just costing them like you know a you know like a five dollar bill, then I don't know that. Like that, that interest will scale as well. I feel like fourteen ninety nine is a number where it's still inexpensive enough to kind of be in there with other premium experiences on the app store. But then it's also it's getting people ready for the idea of um, of paying a little bit more for you know, an even more substantial experience. And you know what? It, I'll, I will say this: that, uh, for me, a silver lining aside from just being there being another good Mario game in the world. If it's fun, then it's fun, and that's great. One more good game for people to play. Mm -hmm. But the real win to me, the real silver lining would be if. This is the game that achieves the dream, right, of like getting people hooked on mobile and then transitioning them into into more substantial experiences, which is like the big fable of like why people say like, you know, oh, like mobile gaming is really that kind of growth is really really good for, you know, for the conventional gaming market. Like it's just it's just a train that, you know, rolls through the different stops. I'm not convinced that people who start at that one stop move on farther down the line yet. I don't know if there's real numbers that can show that's the case, yeah. but I feel like if they price this right and Mario is definitely the right uh, property. This could be that game that makes people go, you know what, I wasn't really into traditional games before. I was mostly into my mobile games, but this was a good bridge for me, and I've, I've settled on the idea that I can spend this much money on a game. Maybe let me see what happens if I spend a little bit more, and, yeah. and I feel like this is the game that maybe could bridge that, which would be cool. Along the same lines, how often do you see some really young kid just tapping their parents' phone, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you give them uh, Super Mario Run, mm -hmm. and you're indoctrinating very, very young kids these days to the whole Mario brand. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, because I mean, Mario is sort of as the, the symbol of video games has been taken over yeah. by Angry Birds and Minecraft, yeah. and so mm -hmm. this is a you know, way yeah. to sort of reclaim that. Uh, all right, switching gears. We have another email this week. This one comes from Daniel Steven. 
and he's wondering if gamers have become too picky. <laughs> he says, I distinctly remember playing a lot of Dragon Ball Z sagas on my GameCube as a kid. For those of you who don't know, Dragon Ball Z Sagas was a subpar brawler where you play through the first few sure seasons was. of the anime. Despite this game's low score on Metacritic, 49 out of 100, I don't regret my time with it. However, I rarely buy games today if publications score them a 6 or below. I feel this transition from I'll play anything I can get my hands on to I'll only play 8s and up is a transition many gamers have made. Is this a good sign that tastes of gamers are improving or are players too picky these days and will miss out on potential favorites as a result? I think that's just... When, when you're a kid and you have no money, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll just play yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. right. And then when as you grow up and you have your own spending money, then yeah, you're I agree. a little more it's, discerning. It's right? largely yeah. economic, I think. As you get older, you're spending your own money. That's one part of it. Another is that the economy went in the toilet 10 years ago and in a lot of ways still remains there. Uh, and it's... It, you know, spare money's hard to come by. And then, you have to be more selective in what you buy. And then also, like, linking right back to what we were just talking about, the race to the bottom, you know, like, in terms of alternatives, when money is tight, if I can spend either no money or, like, a dollar to get, like, 20 hours of entertainment out of some, you know, out of some, you know, little mobile game, mm -hmm. like, mm, would I rather do that or would I rather spend 60 on... You know, on a big AAA yeah. title that might not do it for me. I think there's also there's a difference between being picky and developing critical thinking at mm -hmm. a certain point in your life. Yeah. Like I, uh, I was talking about this a couple days ago about the Nintendo 64, which is this console I hold in in this high nostalgia because I was sort of it was right of that age, like before I actually started like critiquing art. Sure. And yeah. then, whereas right after that, like once the next generation rolled around, I started being like, well, this isn't good for X, Y, and Z right. reasons, mm -hmm. and this is for X, Y, and Z reasons. And so now, as I go on, it's like, well, yeah, if I'm, I don't judge a game based on its score. There's plenty of games I've gotten fives and sixes that I've enjoyed my time with. Mm -hmm. um, like Knack? Yeah, the, like Knack. And just like the same thing, there's plenty of games I've gotten eights and nines that, that I haven't really enjoyed. So, um, Did you really enjoy Knack? No, I don't. Well, I don't know why. If we bring up Knack one more time, Mark Cerny's gonna go through the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and he's just coming yeah, in as a like, soothingly yeah. tough. Yeah. He's very soft spoken. Yeah, he's yeah. like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His ASMR. Uh, no, I remember like renting a game like for a weekend when I was a kid, and like that was the that was the one game you had for the yeah. weekend. Yeah, totally. So like yeah. when I like got Rambo for yeah. the NES and got home with it and realized immediately the game sucked. <laughs> it's like, well, well this, this is, is what I got the whole weekend. Yeah. This is what I'm uh, playing. Yeah. Like, Dan, Dan's review of no Man's Sky, I think, it was was pr pretty spot on. But I played a lot of No Man's Sky and enjoyed it. Uh, it had all the problems that he pointed out, sure. yeah. um, and I still had a pretty good time with it. But looking back, I'm like, man, I could have been playing a good game I haven't played yet. And I do kind of a little go, well, I'm glad I got that context and that experience. But at the same time, wow, look at this list of things this year I haven't played yet. Why would, why did I sink 20 hours in No Man's? Sky? And and now you're getting into something else that I, I think is is worth noting which is we're kind of part of this first generation of people who you know carry gaming on into adulthood with us you know we're we're, we're the first generation to grow up with uh, games from a young age and then continue playing them into our uh, you know adulthood and sure you're right you do we become more responsible with our money absolutely because we're earning our own money and we want to make sure that if we're spending our own money that it's only on something that we find worthwhile but I think there's even a more valuable commodity that becomes even more a uh, limited supply when you get older and that's time yeah. right and I feel like yeah sure the sixty dollars that that can definitely hurt if especially if you don't you know six dollars is a lot of money yeah for yeah. Some yep. people, you know what I mean. Um, but even that being out of the picture, what's really even worse is like, why would I want to spend my time? Mm -hmm. Why would I want to spend 10, 20, 30, or even three hours of my free time that's at a premium for me, yeah. doing something that isn't really um, that isn't really blowing my mind? Yeah, I play a lot of short games nowadays, and and some of it's right. that that those are the games that I feel like I can easily carve out time to to dive all the way through it. Mm -hmm. You know to, to, to Prevent or to permit myself a little pun, diving into Obzu. You know that's mm -hmm. that's a uh, that's a three hour uh, investment. Ah, Firewatch. Because the game takes place underwater. Indeed, my friend. Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, Firewatch. Mm -hmm. Or or you mentioned Oxen Free mm -hmm. earlier. Flower inside. Journey. Yeah. Inside. inside. Lighting uh, up Firewatch. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Well, that's it. <laughs> It, it, I'm trying to come um, up with one for everything now. <laughs> but I don't think, uh, and I guess it's continued through adulthood. I, I still prefer Portal to Portal 2, even though Portal 2 is probably more cleverly Jumping written. through Portal. Um, <laughs> exactly. Damn. Because it's short. I like uh, the Portal short. 
There is something to be said for using your own best judgment and not taking someone else's review as gospel. Sure. Though, by the way, right? Like, I, the Disgaea series is a good example. Vince and I love Disgaea, yep. but yeah. it's a pretty, you're a pretty specific type of gamer yes, who likes yeah. those games. Sure. So yeah. while someone else might think Disgaea is a seven or a six, mm -hmm. it's a nine for us. Yep. Like, yeah. We love yeah. Yeah. So, we like totally. it. Totally. Disgaea. 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 No, same Disgaea. thing. We gave uh, we gave The Witness a ten. The Witness is one of my favorite games of the past couple of years. That's totally a game. If someone's like. This isn't for me. I'm like, I understand that completely. Sure. Because yeah. This game is for a very specific type of broken human being. <laughs> <laughs>All right, it is time on GameScoop when we play Video Game 20 Questions. Ooh. Oh boy. Our suggestion this week comes from DJ Robin. D -d -d DJ Robin! He says, <laughs> he says, first of all, I'd like to say I'm a DJ, and after gigs, the last thing I want to do is listen to music. Instead, I listen to you guys. <gasps> after being treated horribly by club people, it's nice to listen to you guys banter and joke with each other. Have you Aww. ever been treated horribly by club people? No, but like I, I'm usually like playing shows where people are like happy to be there. Or like, like yeah, like industry me. parties. And oh my stuff. God, not just yeah. like are, random people. Yeah, like, are like we a bunch three of MCs and one DJ? Yes. If you guys can rap. <laughs> I, can we? We be getting down with no delay. I, I cannot I mean, rap. Started. Not even in rap. not even like the eighties commercial sense can I rap. Like All right, well, no DJ can Robin. you rap like those three guys in Teen Witch? No. <laughs> That's the really important question no. that you need to answer. DJ Robin has provided a great uh, game this week. Let the questioning begin. He's a All DJ right. hero. Okay. Is that, is that <laughs> your question? We did it, guys! Okay. Okay. Bam! That would be amazing. That would be incredible. That's not the answer. Um, okay. Well, I know how we usually start this, but I'm not going to start it that way because right. you've inspired me, Marty Sleva, as you often do. <gasps> is this game a music game? Uh, no. Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> there we go. Oh, Great right. question. Just throw it out there. Yeah. Great question to ask. Uh, was this game released after January 1st, 2000? No. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, is this game uh, 2D? No. Okay. 1D. Uh, was this game released before January 1st, 1990? No. You said before, right? Before. Okay, so it's between right. 90 and 2000. So it's, so it's, it's a, a 3D game. It's a 3D game between 90 and 2000. Um, is this a, was this a um, PlayStation game? Yes. Okay. Um, is the, uh, are, are, you sh do you, are you using a gun to shoot things in this video game? Yes. Ah, excellent. 3D, okay. 3D, 3D game, shooting. Shooting, shooting guns at people. Um, right. I have to ask because, because it always makes me nervous when we ask the, the platform question, right? Was this released on any other platforms besides uh, PlayStation? Yes. Okay. okay. So it's not right, just it's not a platform no, exclusive. Not a All right. Okay. Uh, Wait, so before 2000, which means it would be PS1. Yeah, almost yep. certainly, yeah. So it's it's in that window. So 95 to 2000, mm -hmm. multi-platform, which means it could be on Dreamcast, Saturn, N64, or handheld, mm -hmm. PC. Uh -huh. uh, and there's shooting involved. That's a lot of video games. Sure. Uh, <laughs> we might want to we, we, we might want to we might want to nail perspective down. Is this yeah. Oh wait, before we even do perspective, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask this. Is this a licensed game? Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, because because we got burned last time. Yeah. I, oh, I have been, I have been, on, a, I have been yeah. on a losing streak. I, I have been kryptonite to this panel. A <laughs> um, license game. Yeah, we, we both lost our last uh, yeah. our last outings. Uh, just to be clear, that means this thing was a thing that was not a video game before it was a video game. That's correct. Okay. Right. Um, uh, did this game appear in arcades? Mm. I don't think so. So I said that because I thought it was uh, the Die Hard arcade game. <laughs> oh, Dynamite Decca? <laughs> no, there's Die Hard Trilogy Arcade. The Die Hard Arcade is Dynamite Decca. The same game. You know what? Why don't we just call it Die Hard Arcade and not Dynamite Decca? <laughs> <laughs> was this game played from a first-person perspective? Um, uh -oh. What? Here we go. What? Here we go. What? The David <laughs> special. Yes. Yes. First person. That's ten. What? <laughs> a first person game that probably wasn't in arcades based on a license. And let me just say that it, just because you play from a per first person perspective doesn't mean you do it that exclusive. Right, no, we, after, the, after the Friday the 13th debacle, we oh, have established. Oh, was that any, the, So Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because, some of that game is first person. Because some yeah. of it's first person, some of it yeah. isn't. Some of the attacks are melee, some of them are ranged. Some yeah. of them are. 
It's horrible. Yeah, well, that was, it was a nightmare. Friday the 13th, I felt like, was I, I just felt guilty for that. That was, that was, yeah, me I, too, deserved, dude. Me I deserved death for that one. <laughs> uh, I don't think you should be that hard on yourself. That's a game that I, I think this is just a fun I, game. I think about that game at least once a day, like, I, and have since I was in third grade. Um, and I, I just felt I'd failed the universe. Right, so we're down. To, we're down to ten All questions. All right, uh, we're down to ten questions. And are we? In the, uh, so let's let us let us sin boldly and trust to the grace of God. Um, <clears throat> let's see. What do we know? So this far? game Japanese developed. Uh, it was. Uh, I don't know. No. No. Okay. okay. Uh, we know this is uh, a game that appeared uh, between, uh, most likely on the original PlayStation, ninety five to two thousand, along yeah. with other consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, some of this game is in first person, right. but also some of this game is probably not in first person. Right. Uh, you shoot things in this game, and it is based on a license. Yep. Is it based on a movie? Yes. Based on a movie. Even better. Okay. Okay. Um, so now I'm trying to think of, of movie licensed games. There in are a this time. lot. There are a lot, um, and I'm trying to think of what some of the more prominent ones are before we start. Independence Day is the obvious answer. Um. <laughs> was there an Independence Day game? Yeah, for PlayStation. Wow. So now I'm thinking also of there was um, there was the Fifth Element. There was. There was a there was a Fifth Element game. There was. I can't remember if, what perspective it was played in though, because I didn't play it because I didn't play license. Was any of Enter the Matrix in in? No, no, that was no, a PS2 era. Because yeah, the, the Matrix came out yeah, in 99. Right. So they started reloading. Exactly. Um, um, what were big like, action movies in the. There were a lot. In the. The 90s. Uh, I mean, there were there were Terminator games, but. Maybe we should ask about the genre of the movie or the genre of the. You know, the. <laughs> the game. I mean. No, because you know, you know, if it's shooting, you know it's going to be an action movie, right? Or sci fi. You know, almost, yeah, or sure. horror, I guess. I guess the problem is like I don't know if we can think of like like can you guys name any first person games that were movie that were movie based? I'm trying to think of the movie well, based things games. like Alien vs Predator or um... oh wait there was a really good Alien uh, first person shooter mm -hmm. uh, on Colonial Marines on uh, so it's the Jag one. There was a, right. It was just uh, there was right. There was the Jag one, but wasn't there a version of it on? I was almost sure there was a version of it on. Uh, yeah, probably PS1. was. Do you guys have any other? No, I like, think we got. I think we got to narrow it. I mean, I agree with you. There's so many movies in that period. Uh, you play as a human. Yes. Oh, okay. You're a human. That's that narrows it down some. So you're not a ship or okay. anything like that. Um, do you mind if I ask them a little bit more specific? Oh, like, go for it. Okay. Um, do you fight against aliens in this in this game? No. Okay. Well, that that yeah, blows nails that out a lot of things. Actually, yeah. you you really narrowed it. Okay. Fighting against aliens based on it. Oh, 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 no, but that's not. That's not a You're a human being fighting with guns against. Everything I'm thinking of is a PS2 era game. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, you know, I, I thought to myself, oh, the, the console Medal of Honors, this is when Medal of Honor becomes yeah. a thing, but that's. That was but, just like it had Spielberg in it and was sort right, of. Right, but it wasn't. It yeah, took it, the same But it wasn't. Uh, uh, right. Based on the movie, let's see, uh, there was. GoldenEye was an N64 exclusive, it's not that. Correct. Right. Um, Oh, he smiled. It could be one there of the. It could, be, it could be like game. Tomorrow Never Dies. Oh my yeah. God, that's right. There were all these, all these really <laughs> bad. There were all these really bad bomb games do in that era. Do you play? And do you play? No, I wonder. Should I waste an espionage question on this? Just ask it. Uh, <laughs> Do I waste an espionage question? On this? I don't know. No, we're playing the nerdiest game ever. Is, is this game espionage themed? No. Oh, okay, so it's not James Bond. All right. I like the wow. idea that he is a very different I feel like I wasted of espionage. Uh, no, 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 that was good. Because we, know we could have been <laughs> guessing between any one of I a number of different... <laughs> well, I mean, the problem is we're kind of sitting in a situation where, like, every movie that came out in five years could possibly be this. Like, uh, We're also stuff. assuming it came out in that period. That's not just uh, something based on oh. a movie. We're also yeah. assuming it's a movie. Are we not no, thinking... he said movie. You're not oh, fighting I said it was based on a movie. Wait, I said it was based on a movie. What oh, about okay. Jurassic Park games? Were there any late 90s first person Jurassic Park games? What was after? I remember the Genesis one and the Super yeah. Nintendo one. There was the Super Nintendo one had first person sections. Yes. PlayStation might. I had a Jurassic Park game on PlayStation. Uh, just trying to think about movie franchises that is this, dominated. Is this games. based on a movie that is uh, widely considered good? Yes. Ooh. That's 15. Great question. Great Star question, Wars game? Maybe? What's that? Oh, could be a Star Wars ah. game. Ah. Remember Star Wars, guys? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not fighting aliens, so it's not. 
It's not Masters mm -hmm. of Terrace. But in most, but in most, in most cases, you be fight, you wouldn't be fighting aliens. You'd be fighting like stormtroopers. stormtroopers, right? Probably. But that's still that's still there are some of them down though, like because right. there are. Like what what games appeared on PS One? Uh, Dark Forces. Dark Forces. Was it which one was on? Was it Dark Forces was one, on PS One. One was one and two, right? Or, or was it just? I don't think Jedi Knight was ever ported to um, was ever ported to play. Right, that's right, that's right. So I think um, Dark Forces is the only. We could ask if it's a Star Wars game. I mean, we could just do that. Uh, yeah, is this a Star Wars game? No. Oh, dang. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> that was the best. That was a really good with, lead we had there. Four questions left. I want to avoid controversy. Oh, no! So I want to specify. Uh, I just want to say, you guys have already danced around this game at some point in this game, in this 20 questions edition. Oh, crap. But I, I want to make sure I'm not misleading anybody, so. So, I have some information. I'm going to hold it back as long as I can. But. Okay. okay. <laughs> there was Jurassic Park. There was Independence Day. You fight aliens in Independence Day. It can't be that. Yeah. There was The Matrix. I said The Die Hard. It's definitely not The Matrix. I said The Die Hard. No, why is it definitely not The Matrix? Because Enter the Matrix came out in the 2000s. Yeah, no, it can't. There was no Matrix. Was a Matrix, Matrix came out in summer of 99. In summer of 99, and no, and there were no Matrix, Matrix games, games for at least a couple years that. after that. Okay, yeah. so I wanted to make sure. If, um, Enter the Matrix, I feel like, was the first yeah, major one. It was. Yeah. Um, okay. um, for PS2, so it can't be. I mentioned Die Hard. Maybe Die Hard. There was a. Well, there, are you sure oh, there was? Oh, because it was oh, a trilogy. Okay. Die, Hard Die Hard trilogy. trilogy. It's Die Hard trilogy. Die Hard trilogy is because different than parts, Die Hard. Because, because, right. because some. But parts, was that not? Is that different than the that's Die Hard? Different than Die Hard. Yeah. Die Hard yeah, Arcade different. is a Saturn game. Die yeah. Hard trilogy because there's is, first is person a, shooting a, in that, yeah. and then there's other. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. Other, and there's a driving thing first person shooting. Yeah. That's Die Hard trilogy. Does this game star John McClane? Yes. Die Hard trilogy. Yeah, I felt like you would dismiss that. Well, that's because that you was... said the Heku to Deku or whatever. No, 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 but that was a Saturn game. It was different. Than, and you, I thought you were yeah. talking about Deku. You said Die Hard Arcade. I yeah. thought the game I was thinking of was also an arcade game because it did have first-person light gun, a first-person light gun segment. Yeah, Die Hard Trilogy is a different, different game. game. Yeah, Trilogy okay. is a different yeah. game. So Trilogy was never in the arcade? No. I don't think. No, no, that was not was my understanding, and yeah. I wanted to make sure that okay. I didn't mislead anyone. Which I think you're right, because yeah. there was a Die Hard arcade game, yeah. but it was yes. not this. So but Die I Hard, if, I didn't know the trilogy was on other platforms besides PlayStation, though. Saturn and PC. Oh, oh yeah. well, well, actually, Die that. Hard trilogy. The Die Hard trilogy. Are you sure it wasn't Die Hard arcade for Saturn? Uh, according to Wikipedia, okay. Die Hard Trilogy appeared John on Saturn. Wikipedia. It, I, I could be wrong about this, but what I remember is Die Hard Arcade, which is Dynamite Decca, Decca right. was based on the Sega arcade game and was ported to Saturn. Right. And the Die Hard Trilogy I'm was Dynamite on. Decca. Uh, is, uh, uh, <laughs> In any <laughs> case, anyway, you, Die Hard Trilogy was developed by Probe Interactive, who I don't mm -hmm. think is Japanese. No, that's And like no longer in business. Oh. Yeah. Published by Fox Interactive, no yeah. longer in business. Rips. 1996 was the year, and there's three. Each game, each movie section is a different, a different style. Yeah, there's the a third person shooter, yeah. a light gun section, and, and driving racing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Die Hard 3 is like, yeah, you're driving a cab around New York de de <laughs> defusing yeah. bombs. Yeah, Di <laughs> Di is there some driving in that movie? Die Hard Trilogy was ambitious and not fun. It was kind of like the modern Bayou Billy. Uh, it was. But yeah, you Di Di liked it. Di, Di Hard time. Arcade it. is really good if you've yeah. ever played it. Wow. That game's great. Die Hard Trilogy. You find a giant football man in the lobby of the Nakatomi Plaza. It's oh, I awesome. remember that part of the movie. Trilogy yeah. reviewed and sold well. Yeah. yeah, and I think people liked it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, liked it. I, I feel like it's Bayou Billy too. See, you got one. Huh? You well, one. yeah, but uh, we, we needed some help there. You got one. I, I almost led us astray again. You're talking a about team. Dynamite Decca. <laughs> <laughs> we are a unit. We are three yeah. MCs. We'll start There's like. no Martai in team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start referring to my Pangas as Dynamite Decca. <laughs> what, about, uh, what about that cool new game you invented, Damon, with the uh, the zoomings? Oh, well, we're going to do more of that, we too. We're going to do more yeah. of that? Yeah. The screenshot zooming guess. We're going to yeah. pick a good name for it, and then we'll do more of that. Okay, too. I have you pick so the name Stay for tuned for that. Before we go, I need a new game to play. I finished Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Liked it. Uh, I need something new to play. I was thinking about maybe Hyper Light Drifter. Is that a good one? Hyper Light Drifter is pretty good. You know what? I've been playing. Um, that I've been digging. I had this long, long love affair with uh, with Invisible Ink, or at least oh, back yeah. when oh, it was yeah. Incognita. Uh, that, back in pre-alpha. That's, that's supposed to come to PS4. What's that? Oh, it did. Yeah. Come, it came to PS4 last year. It's already out on PS4. It's been out on PS4 for a year. Really? For just about a year. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I like what Clay does. So yeah. I totally like. Yeah. Sharing. No. I, I've. Uh, I mean, I would recommend playing it on PC, if you can. I mean, no, the PS4 version is great. That's what I've been playing. I've been playing it in bed and stuff. But it's like it's just a little bit harder to get used to the to get used to the controls. Mm. Um, but it's a turn-based game, so it's not like you need to like yeah. do any reacting like in real time or anything. Yeah. Um, no, I highly suggest it because you, you like me, are a fan of disguise. So I know you mm. love turn-based tactics. Yeah, it's like sure. a it's like a turn-based tactics game. It's like it's like XCOM. 
Disgaea. Yeah, yeah, I always thought that game looked cool. I was waiting for it to come to PS4. I didn't really <laughs> no, it's, it. it's so incredibly smart the way it mixes like RPG elements of like how you develop your characters over time, along with you know turn-based tactics and like resource management. And it's also got yeah. this whole dynamic campaign element to it, where you know especially if you do an endless campaign, you can you have all these different campaign options. If you do endless then it's kind of like running an XCOM campaign, mm. except without the story missions, where you're just like over an extended period of time, you're just trying to see how long you can survive with things just getting harder and harder, and you pick your targets from like a limited number, and then you have to get like break into servers to find more different targets. Yeah. You know, you can find like a key card on, in a guard on one mission that like gets you into a vault in another one, a high value vault in another one. Really cool like heist, heisty type stuff yeah, right. with really tense situations. I know that's a Damien game. Uh, you know what does come to PS4 and Vita this month is Darkest Dungeon. Oh, And yeah. that is definitely yeah. uh, definitely a Damien game yeah. as that well. That game is dope. Yeah, yeah. 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 Darkest Dungeon yeah. is one of my, it's like one of my Dark Horse games of the year. Like that was one yeah. of the games I was looking forward to most in the year. And then it, it came out A, very early in the year, and B, like almost right on top of XCOM 2, and like yeah. I couldn't play both. Yeah. So the the game of the year argument at the end of this year is going to be oh, it's gonna be nuts. This has nasty. been Unreal year for games. Pokemon yeah. Go. Already. Huh? I wonder how many people are going to quit with Pokemon Go with. Uh, Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon Go does things that I've never seen effectively done in a game before. I think there will be uh, there will be a lot of argument for that. All right. Compelling gameplay. All right. Uh, sure. Ridiculous goes on. Anything. <laughs> That's all the scoops we have for this week. You remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Marty. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop. And we're out. <laughs>